Hello, I'm Eunji Park from IM Lab at KAIS. The topic I will present today is an intermittent click planning model. There are three parts in this talk. First, I will briefly talk about the motivation of this research, and then I'm going to introduce our model in the second part. Finally, I will explain the method and the results from the two user studies. Click is a very common action we carry out every day while we are using a computer. However, unlike the pointing task, the mechanics of performing a click are still underexplored areas. There have been a number of research that try to explain tracking movements in pointing task. But very few existing models could answer the question, how exactly do humans click a target? As the title of this paper suggests, our findings show that humans plan a clicking action while performing the tracking task. In this paper, we present a model that explains the mechanism by which a human plans and executes a clicking action and predicting user's error rate in the point and click task. Our model is derived from a queue integration theory. The theory explains how perceptions from different cues are integrated when we perceive certain physical properties. In general, when people try to recognize an object, people use various sensory signals to perceive it. For example, uh, let's suppose a user is trying to estimate the size of the box. First, the user will see the box and estimate the width through the visual information. In this case, the width of the distribution represents the reliability of the perception. And then, the user grips the box and estimates the size of the box again. As a result, these visual and haptic cues will be integrated and the user perceives the final width through the integrated perception. Then, what kind of cues are given to the user in case of a pointing task? In the pointing process, our internal clock processes two types of cues to estimate the time to click. The two types of cues are namely the temporary cue and the visual cue respectively. In terms of the temporary cue, if the click actions were repeated with a certain period, the user can estimate the next click timing based on the former click intervals. However, as the period becomes longer, it becomes more difficult to estimate the click timing precisely. This is called the scala property of the human internal clock. So we can say that the standard deviation of the estimated timing from the temporary queue increases in proportional to the period. The C sigma is a proportionality constant and it is a user dependent parameter. Also, the visual queue is given to the user. The user observes the relative movement between the cursor and the target in the pointing task and the visual cue perceived by user allows to estimate the timing of uh, when the cursor will reach the target and when the user will click. The reliability of the visual cue is related to how long the user can observe the movement of the target. This time is called queue view time. When TC is zero, the standard deviation will be very large because that means no cubing time is given to the user. Contrary, if TC is very long, that means the time to receive information becomes very long and the standard deviation will converge to the delta. So the delta represents the user's upper bound of the precision. If the delta value is very low, the maximum reliability that the user can achieve will be increased. And nu represents the drift rate, which means the efficiency of encoding information. As the drift rate becomes higher, the user can encode more information during the same queuing time. And the timing reliability will converge to the maximum value faster. 
According to the Q integration theory, humans encode the Qs in a statistically optimal way through the maximum likelihood estimation process, and the reliability of integrated Q can be calculated uh, through this formula. We assume the mu values from the two Q are the same. As a result, in the tracking and click process, the user clicks the button at the estimated timing based on the integrated perception. And the response timing distribution shows a Gaussian di distribution with a specific mean and a de deviation. At this distribution, mu means the expected click timing and can be written like this formula. C mu means user's implicit endpoint. The sigma squared represents a variation of the distribution, and the C sigma means the influence of the user on the precision of the timing estimation. If the user clicked the outside of the target, it is supposed to an error. So by calculating the red colored area, we can calculate the error rate. And this is the final formula to calculate the error rate. These four parameters explain the user's cognitive abilities and the characteristics. Then, how we define these two variables, a temporal width and a queuing time in the pointing process. In pointing task, uh, one might think that the pointer movement towards the target is continuous. However, it is not the case the cursor move discontinuously. This is because our motor plan is intermittently updated. And since the updated new motor plan replaces the former motor plan, the tracking path is fragmented with sub-movements. We call this intermittent control. As in the figure with the cursor speed represented as a green line, we can see that the cursor repeats uh, acceleration and deceleration, creating the peaks. The sub-movements are split divided by these local minima of the cursor speed. Then, when the click planning occurs, among those sub-movements, we assume that the click planning occurs in the last sub-movement just before the click. Because the former motor plans are replaced by the updated motor plan, this is because uh, even if the user plans the click during the sub-movement before the last sub-movement, by the intermittent con control process, the former motor plan is replaced and the existing click action planning becomes useless. Let's zoom in the last sub-movement part separately. The two cues we mentioned in prior slides are given in the last sub-movement. As the click repeats, an average of period can be calculated. And the visual cue is also given that uh, gives information about when the cursor reaches to the target. We define TC as the duration of the last sub-movement, and WT, the temporal width, is defined as the time duration the cursor passes through the target. Then we are able to calculate on error rate by substituting the WT and TC to this formula. We verified our model from two user studies, and two types of targets were used in our experiment. The first one is stationary target, and the second one is moving target. In the first study, participants had to click the stationary target. We conducted a uh, user study on a total of 12 people, varying the distance between targets, the width of targets, and the time limits. In the second study, the moving targets were given, and we recruited participants by dividing them into gamer groups and non-gamer groups to compare their cognitive ability or characteristics. As a result, uh, our squared value of the ICP model was 0.992, and the results show that the ICP model successfully predicted the error rate. We used the Warburg's model as a baseline in the study one. 
In addition, in the study 2, uh, the R squared value of our model was 0.985, which means that the error rate was, was also well predicted by our model in the pointing task with the moving targets. We could predict the error rate in the pointing task for both stationary and moving targets. Also, the parameters from study 1 were very similar to the values from study 2. That means the planning and execution of click action is performed with the same cognitive motor process regardless of target movement. The error rate of the gamer group was below than that of the non-gamer group. Especially among the parameters, the C sigma showed a significant difference. That means the gamer's internal clock are more precise to estimate the timing. Please refer to our paper for detailed explanation or analysis of the results. So this is our takeaway notes. Our model explains the mechanism by which a human plans and executes a click action in the pointing task. And our model predicts the user's error rate in the pointing and click task, where a temporary queue and a visual queue are mixed. So thank you for listening and if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to mail me or my uh, advisor, Bang Julie. Thank you.